Hello, friends. It's me, Elf. We're here for our first episode of the Season 2 GM prep for Desperate Gamble. Now, one of the great things about moving into a second season of a show is you look at the themes that you've created, you look at the threads of the last episode, you look at the threads of the season and see like what it is you can use moving forward into sort of like the next season. Like think about any any show that has like a seasonal break. There's always like the first episode, you maybe get some like questions answered, but then there's like what's happening in the background, there's like new stuff to look at, there's you know, there's just a lot going on. I mean, our our uh our wonderful Chiss protagonist has just unlocked their force potential, so to speak. Mabel, our droid protagonist, is dealing with uh, issues regarding possibly meeting their uh, former Imperial boss and uh, the state of the Imperial droids that are remaining on Vode. Um, and, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, and, of course, the ever-looming shadow of the possible warrant out for Omni Bravo remains possible, especially with the ship now back in the air, because, you know, tracking down a lost MC, MC-18 Mon Cal freighter is not exactly, it's not exactly a common vehicle to be tooling around these parts. So that's something we can consider as well. Uh, I want to use today for a great number of broad strokes statements about stuff that we've already kind of like figured out. So it'll be along the lines of a regular, you know, a regular GM stream that we've been doing. But what, what we want to do is we want to set the scene for our season two opener. We want to talk about uh, what we can do generally before I have the new cast member fully integrated. Um, we uh, we have a new cast member uh, lined up, but I can't talk about who they are until I've had the meeting that I have tomorrow. Um, and then we can then we can do all that stuff. I just you know I gotta you gotta dot my eyes and cross my T's <laughs> before before I start announcing things preemptively. Um, so we have, yeah, we have a new cast member for season, season two. Uh, things I want to talk about, season two time skip? I mean, we might do a time skip of some amount of time. Uh, I don't want to do too, too big of a jump, but, uh, definitely, definitely maybe, uh, it's, it's a possibility, right? What I, what I want to avoid is keeping our new character, like, whoever our new character is, keeping them from entering the fray. Um, because, like, we, you know, we're on, like, the ship or whatever for the, the first couple of scenes, and, you know, our new cast member doesn't get to say anything until we, like, get to wherever we can meet them, sort of thing. I want to, I want to try and avoid that. Not because I don't think that there's merit in, you know, continuing the narrative and just bringing people in as, like, as, like, the story sort of works out. I just don't like people sitting at the table feeling like they can't contribute. <laughs> Uh, it's not my, it's not my style. I don't like doing it. I don't like having that happen. So, uh, I want to make sure that that, that our opener doesn't disclude our new player character, you know, like I want to, yeah, I want to make sure that that's the case. Uh, but I also want to give, uh, our characters and our current currently established characters some opportunities to use their skills when they start in to our Vodian sector antics. For example, like, Astrogation, you know, is a skill that would help them get around the sector or, like, find places, like, for, say, the promenade, which is, like, hidden, basically. It's, like, a place that is difficult to pilot to, difficult to get to, and generally not very hospitable to those who aren't, you know, scum and villainy. Um, uh, that kind of stuff, right? It's like, yeah. You know, I I want to I want to be able to give them opportunities to sort of like search that stuff out and like figure out where they want to be and how they want to get there. I'm gonna give them the three options that we currently have, um, uh, that we've written before. So for those of you joining us for like the first 
GM stream of season two. Uh, we have written three. We have written three locations that will be central to our story, sort of in the Vode sector, or at least part of our story in the Vode sector. And we may write more as we need them, or as we decide we want to, um, as we go. But we have three. Those three sec. Those three uh, locations are the Promenade, which is a uh, like h- hive of ca- capital ships all welded together by a droid collective that is being used as a base of operations for a bunch of local pirate gangs and smugglers, basically. So it it is like um, capital ship slap job uh, uh, space station uh, with a lot of like a lot of character brought in by the very illicit behavior, you know, that, that, uh, that, that pertains to the, the area. So it's like a bunch of droids going about their business, creating this like functional habitat. Uh, and then a bunch of pirates and smugglers moved in and went, this is sick. I'm, we're taking this place. So you know, this is going to be our base. Just don't fuck with the droids and they won't mess with us. And we, we, you know, we can just like hang out here super difficult to get to there's a bunch of wrecks around it there's a bunch of asteroids and stuff you know it's it's the perfect location for hiding out in your you know when you've got when you've got a bounty on your head um so we've got the promenade we have bezel six the basically resort planet which has a bunch of like private artificial islands uh owned and and maintained by the the richest of the rich wanting their fanciest of fancy things um and uh you know run by of course the the downtrodden uh uh like employees of the planet the 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 locals or the people who like work there who have to deal with all of these like you know shitty rich people being shitty rich people right I'm thinking that's where uh, our 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 dear nobles from the very beginning of the series uh, come from. Uh, the the Killians uh, live there. Uh, we also have Erdow, which is a nuclear winter biome of a planet. Uh, it's a really nasty place. It's not very hospitable, uh, and uh, it is the secret location of an imperial prison basically that is being run by that is being run by director Kadak Torag the uh former boss of uh Mabel and he is doing something unethical with the prisoners there I don't know what it is yet but we're going to find out something unethical um, uh, because, I mean, just sprinkle in a little of that horrible imperial science, and you get some nasty results, you know? Not sure exactly what that, what that's gonna look like yet, but that's, you know, that's kind of the plan. So, one of the things we need to determine is, uh, positions of the various amulets, or pieces of amulets, because I had this thought that you could break one, and then we'd have to, like, you have to like put it back together and i thought about that being the promenades thing where it's like a bunch of the pirate captains have like pieces of the amulet and it's become some like marker of like leadership within the little like pirate council uh and to get like all the pieces they're gonna have to like make friends with the various the various like pirate factions and convince them that they're that it's worthwhile to like relinquish this like valuable object to them um or take it by force, you know, if they want to go that route and just like storm the storm the fucking castle, so to speak. Um, but I don't think our party will do that, at least as far as I know them so far. Um, but yeah, to have like that split up in the promenade would be nice for like one of the one of the amulets. Uh, and then yeah, some of them could think it's random junk. I mean, it, it's like we haven't really kind of determined like what what it what its value is, right? And outside of vote, it's it's a stone amulet, right? With an indicating marker of three. Uh, and that's that's kind of it. Um, uh, there's some, you know, residual energy to it if you're a force, you know, if you're a force-sensitive person, probably. 
Um, but other than that, it's not valuable, really. Yeah, decoration for Polly's bird fish tank. Exactly. You know, like, whatever you want to do with it. But I'm thinking, you know, in the promenade, we'll split it up. We'll separate the pieces of one of these things into into multiple hands because I think that's... Yeah, like... Like, the Dathomir Space Witch Captain that we wrote some GM streams ago is definitely going to know the value of, a like, a Force-related artifact, you know? And is going to hold on to that thing with jealous, with jealous intention, right? Like, obviously. Uh, and our, our red-haired uh, firebrand of a captain isn't going to give anything away for free, um... Because that just doesn't seem like her kind of deal, right? Like she's just she's just like with Et Etzratali, I believe, was our captain uh, with the red hair, um, who just like is the kind of person who who he doesn't give you anything for free, just nothing. Yeah, yeah. Etzra Etzratali and Amatali, her her sister, the pirate, the 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 cool romance adventure angle of being a cool space pirate, uh, badass pilot. That was that was our second for her, um, and obviously, of course, we have uh, Zazakel and Zazakel being the Dathomiri, and her uh, Rancors, and Tanger and Polly, Tanger Tombo, our third leader of the Promenade, a smuggler, and and cool Mon Calamari dude, uh, and their uh, wonderful space parrot from Bezel. Their parrot, their parrot fish from Be Bezel Six, Polly. Um, so I think for the promenade, what I want to do is yeah, like split it up and then have them interact with like the various pirate factions. The various pirate factions are not always going to get along, you know. Like these these groups are not fr necessarily friends. They live in the same space, but they have like competing agendas. They have competing, you know, like like values or whatever. Like maybe you know maybe one group is very like you know, leave no witnesses, and one group is like, I always leave a witness, because how will my story grow if I don't, you know? And one group is like, if anybody even knows you did anything criminal, you're doing it wrong, you know, like, that kind of stuff, like, all that, all that fun business. Um, so that's my, that's my plan for, uh, for that, for the, you know, for the, the, the promenade. And yeah, some kind of nonsensical pirate code about, you know, not fighting, where you live and and just like keeping the peace in in the the safe havens of, of you know outlawdom uh yeah the rules just literally made up to confuse non-pirates yeah um all that kind of fun fun stuff <laughs> uh i think i think we could definitely come up with some great stuff for for the promenade in that regard uh, and I'm looking forward to getting there. But maybe the players won't go there first. Maybe they'll go to maybe they'll go to Bezel. Maybe they'll go to Erdow, depending on their their desire. Though Erdow, I think they're gonna need a hook to, because it's a secret Imperial prison. Unless Mabel like already knows about it or knows that there's a facility there. I don't think I don't think that will be possible unless there's a hook. What I'm thinking is that we will hook Erdow with a task from the promenade. Because it's the kind of place where a pirate or ally of a pirate might be trapped or or like or like imprisoned, quote unquote, um, and that that might be like part of a quest to, you know, gain the trust of X or Y, a uh, pirate group on the promenade to like go to Erdow and like rescue a certain member of their crew or what have you. I mean, even the two sisters would be like a great example of this. Like we could have one of them like one of them captured on Erdow or like that it happens during play or something like that. Um, but yeah, so there are, there are some secret Imperial forces in the sector. And yeah, if we, if we, the players mess up really bad, you're, you're correct. Uh, you're correct, Bud Prince. We can smash cut to them being in the prison as prisoners. Exactly. Yeah. If they really, really mess, mess up. Um, the other thing is, I think on Bezel, I want to give the amulet to the Killians. If only because it puts it close to Zala's hands. Because, like, uh, because Jander and the Killians are friends. Right? Like, J J Jander and the Killians are, like, they're, like, buddies. They, they're, you know, they work together and they, you know, you know like, have 
have some kind of like employment uh agreement with each other you know i i like to think jander is probably commissioned a you know a starship from uh killian cruisers and and uh you know technologies or what have you at one point um that kind of stuff you know it's like yeah like exactly right name that's the that's what that's the vibe i'm exactly thinking of like i smell a rich person island mansion heist yeah that's that's what i want to provide the 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 Ocean's Eleven style grand plan uh, mansion heist from the vault of uh, some super rich, uh, like, asshole, uh, you know, like, benefitter of the current situation of, like, the destabilization of the governments and stuff. Yeah, that's what I that's what I would like to provide on Bessel. I think there there's I think that there's some goods, and then you chuck it in the garbage. Yeah, <laughs> you know, it's, yeah, it's exactly. The Firefly reference is flying, um, but I would love to do that. Um, I think as like the the sort of like bezel h- hook, right? Like you find out somebody has the thing, then you have to steal it because they're definitely not going to give it to you, and you definitely haven't don't have enough credits to buy it. Like they're you know. This is some like artifact thing that they've been holding, holding on to, and then you know, it's rare. It's rare. It's valuable. It's from an ancient lost civilization. That's like dead and gone. And why would I sell it to you? Why would I give it to you? All that kind of fun. Maybe Dash and his sister could be convinced to help. Indeed, the children can come back up again as like a thing, you know. And there's plenty of like good possibility there as like a as like a general hook or like a just like a, a link back to what we've done before, you know. I you know we you and you always want to be thinking of like what have I used already that could come up in season two in a different context, right? Because when you think about like TV shows and you think about like the way that that stuff flows. It's like, oh, this bartender we met in, like, season one, they have, like, some value uh, to the plot in season two because of X, Y, Z, other thing. You know what I mean? Like, that, like, yeah. And you, and you, and you just kind of, like, rope, rope it in to, like, improve. Yeah, like, internal resonance. That's a good, that's a good, that's a good term, salt, salty ginger, uh, to, to sort of, like, bring everybody back into this, like, familiar but different sort of a vibe. Uh, the other things we have to decide are things that happen to NPCs on Vode. Uh, I think it is important that we consider the Vode situation as the players leave as well. Because, like, Vode is not going to just, like, sit there in a vacuum. Like, Zala has possession of one of the amulets. Like, she's going to work towards, like, trying to force the jungle to do what she wants. You know, and obviously she can't do that to full capacity without more of more of the 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 artifacts. But like she has some bearing on on being able to like, you know, move her plans forward here. Um, having one of these things, she's also out looking for the other three because there is a fourth one, the the dark like the dark side amulet, right? It's out there. Um, uh, which I'm I'm not sure where I want to put yet. But it's out there. Um, And she's the kind of person who's not going to take no for an answer either. So, like, the players will be competing with Zala and Utico to get these things, right? Like, generally. Like, there will be movement on my NPC's side of things, you know, as well. Um... The other thing we want to consider is, like, did Bosak escape? Maybe we put them on Erdow, you know? Maybe they got to the promenade. Like, like are they are they around? Like, the little Jawas. Uh, what's the situation with Haverford? Because he's, he's there and he has all this, like, Vodian research that they just, like, they just, like, left him there without really, like, checking in or even, you know, you know what I mean? Like... Keep it secret is not... It's not exactly, like, a fucking security situation, right? Uh, it's Zyle just being like, keep the research secret. It's like, well, I mean, it's only gonna last so long. Uh, 
Haverford was offered a lifetime supply of rancor rush in exchange for compliance. I definitely think the end result is that the, the Utico gets their hands on Haverford's research. Um, I don't think Haverford is the kind of person to bodily resist. If you know what I mean? Like, just not the kind of guy who can keep you out of his room and he's not gonna he's not gonna get arrested so that he can keep doing things in secret. Uh, I think I think if he gets caught, then that research falls into the hands of of Utico. Uh and it's not complex research, obviously. Like it's just stuff about the language, like voting culture, so on, so on, so on, but there's other stuff like going on. Honestly, if Zala's not going to destroy the ruins, then Haverford wouldn't care so much. Exactly. The ruins are... They are a vector by which things can be done. And the other thing is, like, because Zala has the amulet that she has, that she just, like, that Zyle just gave her, uh, going to the ruins and plugging it in herself and talking to the the spirits of Vode is a thing she can also do, you know? Like, the players don't have an edge on any of the intel that exists, right? Like, that stuff can also be garnered by our current NPC situation. Like, there isn't anything secret that they know that she doesn't. And yeah, maybe the spirits wouldn't tell her anything. Maybe there would be a little bit more, like, pushback, and that's gonna that's gonna limit her for a little while, like, obviously. Um, but I'm not I'm not sure that they that they would necessarily recognize that a person who has the amulet is, like, necessarily, like, not someone they can trust. You know, if you know what I mean. If you're coming here and activating the thing, then you you probably care about it, but it'll depend on her answers and stuff like that. In a duel of wills, yeah, we'll, you know, we'll see. Um, It's, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a question mark, right? Obviously, I'm not going to set Zala on them immediately. The idea that Zala will be their rival throughout the plot is something that I want to keep in my back pocket for at least a couple of episodes and then have it sort of, like, reveal itself, you know, in a, in a situation where they need to make it count and then Zala and a bunch of Utico goons show up and try and, like, take what they're after or that kind of stuff. Like, I want to make sure that I'm I'm playing it, like, that I'm playing it for them and not playing it for me, you know? Uh, sending Utico security forces chasing the amulet first is foreshadowing. Of course, yeah, of course. Uh, Zala's not going to be everywhere. Um, yeah, 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 that sense of security. Well, like, they, they've escaped road. They're not going to be chased, you know, like that kind of... I want that feel. I want them to feel like they can explore a little bit before they have to worry too much about being like ultra cagey. Um, so I'm thinking they'll probably end up on either Bezel or the Promenade first. Either one could lead to the other one, and either one could lead to Erdow, depending on what they want to do. Um, once I know more about our, our fourth character, once we've built that character, and I'm hoping to be able to do that on one of these GM streams, like sit down with our new player and, and like build a character together on stream, on the GM stream, um, then, uh, like we'll be able to, yeah, tie them into one of those locations and we can like choose where it is they want to be at, uh, when we begin. Like Erdow is totally Mabel's obligation role. Yeah, I think I think Mabel's obligation is gonna shift towards like the former Imperial situation more than the Imperial droid specifically to Vode. Uh I think that will that will definitely change for sure. Um but uh yeah, it'll depend on what, what our new player wants to play a little bit, or as what as to what our starting position is, because um you know, I, I like I can't position them until I know who I'm positioning. Obviously, I think the promenade would be the the best place to go in terms of like being able to hide out in this like, you know, wretched hive of scum and villainy and it's in space and like make your next move. That seems like the place to go and it's where I want to lead them first because it's also the place where I feel like we have the most detail. Like we've made the most progress with with the promenade in terms of like creatively i think i know i know where we're at 
uh, on the promenade a little bit more than the the other two locations. And Erdow just can't be the first. They can't be the first one. They they have no way to know that there's anything going on there. Zal could have heard of the promenade. I mean, any of them could have, and it's easy to, like, link it up. And it's easy to meet random new people at the promenade, right? And, like, link them into the group is the other thing. Because it's just, like, a place, it's an eclectic place full of eclectic folk, you know? Um, yeah. So, that's kind of, that's kind of where I'm at right now. I'm just doing a lot of thinking about, uh, where things are going to land. Um... I want to make sure that I'm allowing, now that we're in space, we're going to have some space situations, you know, combat, skill roles, these kinds of things. I want to make sure that I, I start using the vehicle stuff a little more because we have players who are like pilots or gunners, you know, and like making sure that they get to use their skills to their fullest is important and valuable. Um, and, uh, yeah, I mean, like coming up with some... Some space encounters is probably worthwhile. You know, random random sort of stuff. Um, and, and figuring that out. Uh, but that's, that's like in between, in between session stuff that can be easily done between me and, me and the, the brain trust on the Discord. Uh, by the way, the Discord brain trust has been doing a fantastic job. Uh, of uh, of recently of of uh, coming up with a bunch of details and stuff. I think Bud Prince drafted up a bar for the promenade, which is like a four four directional gravity location, where like the gra- the gravity generators of like various capital ships sort of like align in a weird way, and so you can walk on the walls and ceiling of the same room uh, <laughs> in the, of this bar and like ne- never fall, which it's kind of awesome. <laughs> it's, it's like a thing. It's very cool. Uh, kind of a kind of a situation. Um, I'm hoping that uh, Mabel asks about the scrap hive droids. I think there's gonna be. I I want to put I want to put an emphasis of mysticism on the the like scrap hive stuff. I want to put an emphasis of like of like respect or like or like um. Not awe, but like f- fear, almost for the like scrap hive stuff. I want to make sure that like when they're asking the pirates about like who's around, that one of the things that like always comes up is like don't fuck up, don't don't fuck with the droids, like leave them alone, let them do whatever it is they do, you know, like don't don't mess with them, let them do their thing, like. People, people don't interfere with them, and you shouldn't interfere with them. Like even from the the like tough guy pirates, you know. I wanna, I wanna sort of like, like yeah, like provide this this very uh, like enticing possible badness, you know, this like enticing danger, right? Yeah, I, I that that's a good that's a good little 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 tick there, but Prince like droids try would try to communicate with her non verbally first to check if she's a member, so they'd pause before talking to her oddly. Yeah. They wouldn't do that with the meat bags. Yeah, no, obviously. Obviously. Obviously they know that, that the various living organisms in their meat suits are not uh members of the scrap hive. But yeah, I wanna provide that because we have that great but for instance, that great art of Scrap O One, the the little astromech droid formerly named nicknamed Scrappy, uh, with all those like wires and cables and 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 the like dead X Wing pilots still in the X Wing, like connecting all of this stuff together in this like crazy uh like hive hive mind uh of of creation and like building of this station. Hang on, I'll I'll grab the art again because I really wanna, I really wanna just like show that off again, um, because it's super super good, and I wanna I want to try and provide them with an opportunity to maybe see Scrap O One. I'm not saying like it'll definitely happen, but I want to provide the possibility that it might happen. If you know what I mean, like just like a. Just like a possible, maybe, maybe this kind of a situation. 
um to to really like give 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 them something to to like you know mystery look forward to okay here it is here, here look at this look at this look at this look at this little droid all these wires and connectors and craziness going on in this like skeletal x-wing pilot in here that nobody's allowed to touch not allowed to touch so good right that's our that's our scrap hive leader designation scrap 01 pilot called them scrappy yeah originally an astromech droid who fused their x with their x-wing that crashed into the bridge of a star destroyer managed to connect with the imperial droids after all the biological life was dead and uh scrappy's been using the extra computing power from the capital ship systems to like augment their own and basically powers the entirety and like like generates all of the the systems for the promenade from their little bunker you know and then they never really leave their they, they never leave their their little ship pretty great it's pretty fucking cool i'm gonna make sure i have this like saved i think it's important to me for later there we go make sure i have that saved somewhere but yeah i mean we have we have a bunch of there's also art for um for our dathomiri witch which was also a, a butt prince move like look at her she looks like a fucking boss ass dathomiri witch uh pirate lady also really cool for sasa kill um, so we have, yeah, we have some stuff for the promenade, like, set up, ready to go. Um, yeah, my hope is to give them sort of, like, uh, enticement to want to know more about the droid stuff. But, like, if they don't take it, they don't take it. But I know that Andrew will because Andrew loves, like, dro droid and, like, hu human relations and, like, the sentience stuff. And, like, yeah, I Andrew will take the bait. If I set, if I set the bait, Andrew will take the bait. I'm almost, I'm almost entirely sure. Um, yeah. So I think the introduction, sort of like promenade wise, is gonna be very uh like let's meet some people with, let's meet some people from the gangs. Let's. Uh, like, see what pirate person we want to talk to. It'll be very, like, season one sort of opener. Um, in terms of, uh, in terms of, like, situating, finding NPCs, like, figuring out what you want to do. Like, you have this objective of this, like, amulet. Are you going to ask about it? Are you going to be quiet about it? Are you going to keep your eye out? Are you going to, you know what I mean? Like, it, it'll be about them deciding, like, how they want to proceed uh, a little bit while I just, like, throw... Well, I just like throw environmental situations at them uh, until they until they find their feet in this like new environment, and I don't think it'll take them long. They all know each other now; they're all comfortable together. So it, I mean, we'll have a new player, so that you know that always takes a little a little a little settling in. But I'm sure they will find their feet very quickly. <laughs> oh yeah, Bud Prince, definitely. But like, don't mess with the droids though either. You know, like you're not supposed to touch. You're not supposed to touch them. Maybe like one or two people have some inkling as to like why that would be, but the the general consensus passed down through the the quickly murdered generations of pirates, uh, because you know things move quickly in the world of violent crime, uh, is that you just don't mess with them, and then they keep everything running, and and we don't have to do it. You know, the life support system isn't going to fail if you. D if you don't piss off the droids, you know, if you don't, if you don't upset their routines. Um, so that's, yeah, that's, that's sort of like a major, a major thought of mine. Um, but there's a, there's a bunch of like great stuff that was brought up in the discord recently. Like ideas wise, we've got a lot of, a lot of fancy stuff. Like Bud Prince came up with a special holiday for, for the promenade. The Grav Zero Day, a scheduled station-wide artificial gravity shutdown that happens every year at the same time. No one knows why it happens, but uh, it's it's like they've just made it a holiday. Special Zero-G activities between even the most bitter pirate rivals. 
Zero G acrobatics, dance parties, drinking, etc. The Trash Compactor Arena holds a special Zero G wrestling event, which draws even pirate leaders in for a true spectacle. The pirate leaders are given special seats that have their own gravity generators to the event. Everyone else has to hook up or hold hands. <laughs> I love it. I love it so much. Just like this little, this li these little details. This is the stuff that really like makes it a living thing. You know, um, yeah. The art, the art channel does does have that. I think all the way back down. I scrolled up in the art channel to find the scrap, the scrap wipe. So the the diamond was it the yeah the the diamond, uh, which is this this bar that has like gravity generators from all sides, uh, like sort of converging on a point, and thus is like this weird. Uh, yeah, like diamond shaped place, you know, where y you're not gonna, you're just, you can't fall basically from, from one to the other. Or if you, I guess if you jumped high enough, you might get pulled by the gravity of another side of it. But you, you get what I mean. It's like a, it's like a many sided place. The Diamond Sabak Parlor, a cantina slash Sabak par Sabak Parlor. Set up on the promenade, gets the name for its defi gravity defying shape at the intersection of four different ship parts. I really like it. There's also the the uh, the uh, owner, Toge Toge Karmit, our our uh, Duros sort of like leader of that or owner of that particular establishment. <laughs> Wanted to give him a Star Wars version of those really tacky card suit suits. Yeah, yeah, very cool. <laughs> perfectly trustworthy face yeah he's trustworthy trustworthy fellow definitely 100 percent um but it's always good to have a bar it's always good to have a bar in your back pocket in case the players uh, are not sure where they need to go or what they need to do or how they need to set themselves up um a bar is always like a good directional uh point um for for just like getting everybody situated in a familiar sort of environment, um, but yeah, so we're we're in a bit of a <laughs> we're in a bit of a bit of one of those situations where it's like once I know who the new player's character is, I can start writing specific situations, and because we've had a bunch of GM streams, um, where uh we didn't have a game, we've already set up a lot of the season two sort of like general broad strokes like fun times stuff which is which is good it's our it's already like on the table it's already in my mind um i've got to think about like some art i'm, I'm hoping to get official official art of the characters this season i kind of dropped the ball on on commissioning official stuff uh i i was i was doing lots of running of the game and forgot about doing art but we only have vodian art for like the the backdrops as well so i may try and commission some some art for like the promenade for Erdal and for um bezel uh to see what we what we can do um for environments um but that's you know that's that's a it may not be ready for for session one because i don't want to i don't want to leave too big of a seasonal gap it's one of those things where it's like you want to take a little breather so everybody can like you know whoof like refresh you know during the during the little break but you don't want to be away too long while you prepare way too much stuff and and don't start up again. The main thing for me was making sure we had another cast member, which we do. Uh, so that's or we should. So that's that's good. That's fine. Um, yeah. Uh, you you did you did write a bunch of NPCs for Erdal on original poster. I saw the text. I didn't. Uh, I haven't read through all of them. Um, but I saw that you posted some stuff. Yeah. There was a Trandoshan. I saw this. Yeah, this this Trandoshan. Susk. Trandoshan Hunter. Scorekeeper. You know, Garot Wire kind of business. Well, training. <laughs> Extroverted and bombastically playful, the Trandoshan greatly enjoys bragging of her accomplishments to an enraptured audience. She's always been attracted to humanoids, farm on their own species, and likes to flirt. Uh, nothing but scornful anger and hate towards her Imperial Remnant captors. Makes sense. However, no matter how intense her desire for revenge burns, she knows that not all prey can be taken head on. She much rather survive to enjoy the revenge's aftermath than throw away her life pursuing it. I mean, these are great. These are wonderful, like, big old blocks of, of like, helpful information. 
um, that I can use to uh, populate cells, you know, like populate uh, um, like the Erdow prisoner prisoner block. Um, that I think will be really, really helpful. Yeah, we've got like a Gand, we've got a Trend Ocean, we've got a... What do we got here? Hoopaloo. I'm not sure what our Hoopaloo is. I have to look that one up. What are Hoopaloo? Hoopaloo. Oh, they're like bird. They're bird people. Sentient species covered head to toe in ruffled feathers, which could be brown with blue highlights. Sharply hooked beak, and their feet have three toes and one on the back. Cool. I didn't know that one. I don't know. I don't know everything. Turns out I don't know everything. Um, but so those are those are wonderful for like having the information on hand that I need. Um, some stuff that we might want to consider are some other locations for the promenade and for bezel in terms of like specifics. Um, you know, we have the general the general approach. I really like that we're working on. Yeah, like the bar is good. But prints for uh, well, you can put those bounty NPCs in the prison anymore if we don't have any. But yeah, it's true. Yeah, if we don't end up with a bounty hunter. Um. Uh, I know you had a, another location that you uh came up with by Prince, but I want to read it over before we like talk about it on the GM stream. Uh, I haven't fully absorbed all the information. I will admit freely. Um. The thing I think we need to do, like I said, is uh focus in on some of the more specific interactions that they could have with people on either of those planets. Yeah, Vortex City is like a good example for, for Bezel where we have like sort of like the the less extravagant populations of Bezel. Um and uh yeah, I mean there was a droid merchant for the button that could be easily repurposed for, repurposed for the promenade. You're correct. Um and we could like set up a couple of stores or like other establishments that are not just like a store or a bar. Uh, because we want to, like, provide some, some creative options. I mean, the trash, the trash compactor arena is pretty, pretty sweet as an idea when it comes to capital ships. I really enjoy that. Um, and I just want to make sure that we, we have, like, sort of, like, a living, a living, breathing thing going on that we can throw at them. But, yeah, I think a lot of what we're doing this week will, will be, is, like, more of our broad strokes, like, establishing where we are what we're doing um and then oh yeah the bizarre ring was another promenade place yes you're correct but i mean that's that's a good it's still a good place um but knowing <sighs> there are some things i need to know before i can set any specific situations up oh one thing we didn't talk about at all but that we definitely need to is uh is uh Progressor Derge, the 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 uh, Chiss, the Chiss agent, who they fucking ran over with a speeder, but who is still alive. That dude is gonna be fucking mad. <laughs> he is gonna be very angry, and I can only imagine. That that's gonna be, that that's gonna be like Zyle Nemesis, you know, for this season. That guy is gonna be like, her obligation is, mm, it's gonna be a problem. Mad but trapped? No, actually, not trapped. Because even if you get Fonglung, uh, their yeah, their obligation. Um, yeah, obviously, yes, correct. Um, I was getting excited. Uh, but. Coming back around. Um, oh, my brain. Not trapped, necessarily. If you have... If you have Fung Lung, you can use a uh, Fog Rebreather to get off world. You just gotta get the supplies, right? And I feel like if this person says to Utico, I'm going to kill that the those annoying people who bested me the last time and I'm not planning to give them an out this next time 
then I'm pretty sure Zala will be like, cool, bring me the amulet. <laughs> you know, if you get them, you know, I'll, I'll give you all this stuff for free. And uh, if you get them, then the only thing I want is the amulet. And you can solve your problem and I can solve my problem. Cutting a deal with Zala and he gets a Darth Vader style breathing noise. Yeah, we can get we can get some sweet like, you know, situations going. It's not my best Darth Vader noise, but I, you know, I did what I could. Um, which I think would be great as like a returning villain. He'll be, he'd be, he would be super, super good. Uh, the other NPC that we should probably place is Keld. Was this sword the Cortosis one? It was, yeah. Uh, yeah, the sword they picked up from his body was the Cortosis one. I didn't mention it on stream. I did mention it off stream to them when we finished. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, Keld's just made, like, a buttload of money. And I think, yeah, it's just going to go and blow it somewhere. So, like, they might run into Keld on Bezel, but I want to put Keld in their line of sight, if only because if they want revenge for Panakata, like, Xyle might want reven like revenge. I want Keld to be, like, within striking distance. You know, I don't want to take them off the board. I want to provide the possibility of a, of a target. You know, the possibility of a of a, a comeuppance. Help. My absolute, my absolute, um, best takeaway plot wise would be them hiring Keld to try and take out Zala. Like it would require a huge payday, but if you're already heisting a rich guy's mansion, why not raid his vault while you're at it? And, and steal a bunch of credit chips and then pay Keld to go after Zala. You know what I mean? Like, stuff like that. Like, I... Mm, ugh. That would be fun. Because <laughs> it's not like Keld cares. Ah, the shepherd method. Yeah. Um... But so that that that's kind of like I want to make sure she's on the board. I think Bezel is a good place to put her. Uh, I don't think she would have been captured or or taken taken prisoner by anyone. And she's definitely not going to hang around on vote if she's already made the hundred the hundred k bounty. There's no reason to. Um, oh, excuse me. Fog Warden wise, we don't have to worry about them in specific currently until the players go back to vote. I definitely think Gubs and Clipper are taking taking control, taking action, uh, and still causing Utica as much trouble as they can. Um, I imagine a lot of the conflict is over the ruins at the moment. Just yeah, just like a just like a lot of a lot of the land conflict is yeah probably over the the actual like force ruins. Um, and you know the Fog Wardens know that stuff a little better than Utica does, so like. There may be some changes based on how long it takes the party to go back, basically. <laughs> Keld's on vacation at Bezel 6 and absolutely miserable. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like Keld's the kind of old lady who could enjoy herself. You know what I mean? She's like, she's a she's not an all work, no play kind of a lady. I mean, she is like always drinking in every scene that we basically, every scene that we shot with her. She was always drinking like some weird orange orange uh shot glass beverage. You know. I think I think she's she's the kind of late yeah, she's the kind of lady who could have a good time. But Bezel is a tourist trap for rich people. I mean that's true. It's not maybe it's not her kind of fun, but Yeah. I'm looking forward to uh, designing the Killian Mansion layout, uh, as well as the various security measures, traps, uh, 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 security protocols they'll need to bypass and stuff. I think that's one we're gonna we're gonna have to do like as a like an actual map. Like I will put a map down, and I will you know I will draw a shitty map on Roll Twenty or like with lines and stuff, and come up with like a sweet. A sweet rich guy mansion layout, like that. That's that'll be fun. I'm looking. I'm looking forward to that. Um, as a as a thing, we'll write. We'll write a dungeon. You know, we'll write a Star Wars a Star Wars heist dungeon, and it'll be the Killian, 
The Killian Mansion. <laughs> Swap systems to scum and villainy. Do a full on blades heist. No, I mean I don't want to do that, obviously, but I I do want to, I do want to make it a little a little more like uh granular when we do that kind of stuff. It's like a star destroyer is too big for me to write like write a map for. We do zones on a thing like a star destroyer, but for a like a for like a mansion, hell yeah, we can do a we can do like a cool mansion. And then just have people, you know, say what they're up to and what they're doing and, like, move move around it a little bit. It'll be fun. It'll be a fun time. You know, a little, a little switch up of our, a little switch up of our, uh, typical method based on, you know, it's season two. We can, we can mess around with it a little bit. We have a little more fun, a little more, a little more varied fun with it. I think it'll be, I think it'll be good. I think it'll be a good time. Right. Well. Hopefully, my dear friends, I don't know if this is for sure, but hopefully next week I will be able to bring you uh, a sorry about that uh, a stream of um, player character creation. What I'm hoping is that next week on our GM stream we will be able to have our new player on stream and we'll make whatever character it is they want to make for for uh the system so that's uh you know that's the plan i don't know that that will be that will be what happens it depends on their their availability so forth um and if it isn't then we'll you know we'll make it off stream and i'll i'll know and i'll inform you as to like what what the plan is um but that's what i'm hoping to do next week for the for the l lgm stream um, until then, uh, I hope you all have a lovely rest of your week. There's no game this week because we're still prepping stuff up, obviously. Um, but yeah, you will, hopefully you'll get to meet the newest, the newest member of our, our nerdly crew and the voices of Vode can start, uh, can start theorizing about their character as well and getting hype. I'm, I'm excited. Um, yeah, somebody in the discord called the, called the collective, the collect I think it was Chaotic Bastard called the collective uh cacophony of Discord nerds, the the brain trust, the voices of Vode, and I really like that. So I'm just gonna steal it as a community name. Uh <laughs> for our Discord. We are we are we are the voices of Vode. GM in this GM in this business. And if you wanna join us, there's the Discord link. Salty Gingers just posted it. Yay. Um but yeah, so I'm going to uh, get ready for the new character. I'm gonna, you know, like think about some more specific NPCs over the course of like the next week or so, uh, and then hopefully we'll have the new character. Then I'll have a GM stream and we'll be able to play. I'm hoping to be able to play by like early June, you know, like not next week but week after, maybe. But I gotta check in with Roll Twenty and make sure that everything's like good to go, because um, there's some talk about like what exactly we're going to do there's some mysterious meetings that i need to have mysterious meetings um but yeah so uh i'm distracted elf you can find me at twitch.tv slash distracted elf or on twitter at distracted elf if you want to hit me up for any reason um my partner and i have been doing a lot of like streaming of league stuff recently league of legends stuff uh because that's just what we do in our free time um, and I've been tweeting a shit ton of miniature painting and building and what have you because I've caught the hobby bug and I'm just like entirely consumed by my desire to keep building and painting things at a small scale. <laughs> um, so if you like that stuff, you can follow me. Um, what else? Uh, roll 20. If you also feel that you could use a time skip for your season two of your campaign but jimmy has moved out of town and you'd really like jimmy to be able to keep playing with you because you know they're cool they've got like a barbarian or whatever and it's they're like key to the party and they're they're like one of your friends um why not bring your season two to roll 20 and play on the virtual tabletop rather than the in-person tabletop uh, over a distance so that jimmy at his new job in san francisco can still play 
uh, with you on your. This is a. I lost the thread of this narrative. Can still play with you in your campaign, and their barbarian can still tank all the damage. Uh, Roll twenty dot net. Play virtual tabletop. Play tabletop games with over any distance and uh, with whoever from wherever. Uh, even if Jimmy moves away. There you go. <laughs> I feel like these get worse every week. I just, I'm trying to think of like any kind of hook and I just, it just gets worse every week. Anyway, uh, I'm, I, <laughs> roll 20, <laughs> roll 20, play tabletop games with Jimmy. Uh, have a, have a great rest of your day, friends. And I hope you have a good, uh, evening and, uh, you know, beware of the power of the dark side or what have you. See you friends.